dare you to ask her again. Babe, she doesn't want to talk. You're going to break that. Any relationship is difficult. <laughs> Mom will open up when she's ready. I never said I broke up with Jared. Are you saying you didn't? What I'm saying is, whether I did or not, it's none of your business. Mom doesn't like to share pain. Excuse me? Mom is the Robin Hood of pain. She takes from those who have too much and she spreads it around to those who don't have enough. The stupid thing is broken. <laughs> Where's Lauren? Vincent I just simply asked you to pick her up. I left a message on the machine. What's my fault? I'll go. No, no I'll get her. Usually fine. You move the car out of the driveway. I am the worst. Get your car out of the driveway. Why are you just following me? Let me go. Just let me just get my keys. keys. All right, all right. No, the... Nobody talk unless I point to them. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's her, her now. now. What happened to the point? Thanks a lot. I am so, 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 so sorry. I, I'll play Barbies with you every night for, for two months. Uh, Rob Meltzer, Lauren Sensei. Yeah, a Amy Gray. I think I, uh, I think I met you when I signed Lauren up. Yeah. Uh, come on in. Thank you. Hello. Shall I go and check on your daughter? Yes. Yes. Uh, tell her I'll buy her a pony. <laughs> it's in gray, brother. Oh. My brother. Not, not Lauren's, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I, I figured I'd better bring her home. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did. After she waited a half hour. I know, I know. It never happens. We we, we uh, take turns and something fell through the cracks and and it it, it it's not gonna happen again because I uh, I I'm I'm gonna hire a babysitter. <laughs> One of these days. It happens all the time. Really? Yeah. It's nice seeing you again. Hey, Rob. Would you like to have dinner with us? It's, it's, it's just noodles, and, and the, the pepper mill is broken, but... Uh, no thanks, Mrs. Gray. I, I have plans. It's, it's Amy. Mrs. Gray is my, my ancient mother. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. Yeah. All of you. Shut up. Great. I hope you don't want to change your CSO again. Uh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that. I, I, I have an idea, an administrative idea, and obviously you are the go-to guy. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's within your sphere. What is it? Adoption day. Uh -huh. Other counties are experimenting with it. We set aside one day every quarter to finalize adoptions. Currently, as you know, we just slot them in whenever we can. Nope. And it... No? By slotting them in, we cut into our backlog. I can't support anything that'll put our dockets behind. But when we slot them in, we don't give them their, their moment. Their moment? Well, they show up, and to them it's as important as a wedding, and we just rush them through. These are foster children who have waited months or years to be adopted, and it's getting bogged down at the judicial level. Because judges are bogged down with more pressing cases, like neglect and delinquency. 
So we do it on a Saturday. The weekend? One Saturday. Every three months. We could process 200 adoptions. Judges, lawyers, CSOs, court reporters volunteering. Four Saturdays a year. Four Saturdays a year. <laughs> Oscar, I am honored to present your daughter, Ariadne Gray, Matt. She's a beaut. A peanut. Hi. It's daddy. A baby. He likes her. It's your daddy. She looks so much like... I know. My mother. Oh, God, I wish I could just hold her. Oscar, what's the matter? We'll get you out of here. We'll all be together one day. It's not just that. What? Have you found someone else? Donna, I'm a convicted murderer. Ariadne will grow up knowing you did not kill your mother. That is my solemn pledge. But look in, into that sweet, sweet face. I, I have to tell you something. Like the truth. Sending chuckle. I just wanted to push him out the window. No one would suspect you of killing Judge Verde. You've been so close. He doesn't think I can get any of the judges to volunteer their time. He thinks we're all like him. We're not all like him. Good morning. She's supposed to be on maternity leave. Yeah, I better call my brother. Let's see the gasket blue. Miss Ray? Hi. Yes? I'm Barb Gallinelli. I run the Rape Crisis Center here at the hospital. I heard you just met with our administrator about the abandoned house on Carrisbrook Road. But then you probably heard he said the hospital can't afford to give up such valuable real estate. Well, they can't afford to renovate it either. Sanctuary House begins and ends with the property, Miss Gallinelli. Sanctuary House, your idea is wonderful. An abuse center for kids, come on, it's brilliant. The police botch the interviews, the prosecutors are detached from the case, the kids are further traumatized, it's a dog's breakfast. You drink a lot of coffee, don't you, Miss Gallinelli? Barb. They're kind of tough. That's good. You'll need to be. I don't have a lot of patience for politics. What I'm proposing is that you work with the Rape Crisis Center to make this happen because I live for the politics, Miss Gray. Come on. Buy a cup of coffee. Please call me Maxine. Have you ever considered a nice cup of chamomile tea? In my opinion, and that of several colleagues, Haley Demiola suffers from early onset schizophrenia with aspects of Asperger's syndrome. Haley's pathology includes a lack of empathy, emotional detachment, maliciousness, and an inability to discern between fantasy and reality. Did you do a PET brain scan on Haley? Yes, and we found positron emissions congruent with this diagnosis. Did you by any chance find horns, a tail, maybe a pitchfork? Objection. Sustained. Grow up, Miss Salyers. Those are my questions, Your Honor. Now let's get something straight here right off the bat. I have in front of me a, a divorced couple who disagrees so strongly on how to treat their 13-year-old mentally ill daughter that they had to bring in the state to make that decision. Objection, Your Honor. To what? We will show that Haley Demiola is not mentally ill, but rather that she's possessed by a demon, thus necessitating an exorcism. Off the record, please. <clears throat> I have to be honest. I don't relish the idea of adjudicating this case. It involves uh, religious faith, an extremely ill child. Are you absolutely certain you cannot come to an agreement outside my courtroom? Judge, my daughter is very sick. She's mentally ill. She's not possessed by demons. Haley speaks languages. Her room is cold. Even the doctors and nurses feel a sense of dread when they approach her. We need help to do what's best for our daughter. 
Back on the record, please. Cross, Mr. Kara. Dr. Kemper. Does schizophrenia explain the scratches? Yeah, we, we, we've all seen the movie. I'm sure Miss Salyers will stipulate to the scratches, to the speaking of ancient languages, the levitations, and all the other spooky phenomena. Yes, Your Honor. Of course she does, Your Honor. Those spooky phenomena are the basis of Mrs. Demiola's contention that Haley Demiola requires an exorcism. Well, I'm, I'm not here to decide whether or not Haley is possessed. I'm here to judge whether an exorcism will help or harm her. I'm not sure I understand. A court of law is, is not a good place to debate the existence of God or the devil. It is a good place to judge what is best for a 13-year-old girl. Your Honor, if we can convince you that Haley Demiola is indeed possessed by a demon, then you're more likely to rule in our favor. And Miss Salyers will simply counter with arguments to say those symptoms can be explained by mental illness. Mental illness does not explain Haley's ability to rip heavy canvas restraints or the levitation of her bed. Mr. Kara, I have been through the briefs and affidavits. Windows cracking, Haley speaking ancient languages, the drop of temperature in the room. You may well be able to give me goosebumps or even keep me up at night, but what my ruling will come down to is whether or not an exorcism will harm Haley. So please, confine all your questions to that matter. Uh, Dr. Kemper. Is it not true that in several cases, like Haley's, the child in question has benefited from an exorcism? Yes, that's true. If there's no such thing as demonic possession, then why does an exorcism help? Because in many cases, the ritual of exorcism itself serves the child in a beneficial psychological way, a placebo effect, if you will. Then how do you know Haley won't be one of those children? In an equal number of cases, the exorcism has actually done harm. What kind of harm? The child forms a notion that he or she is intrinsically evil. There is a corresponding decompensation. The child feels damned. No further questions, Your Honor. You know, morning. Morning. I don't think morning. Morning. I could just uh, interrupt for one moment to appeal to your good side. I think you should know better than to use the word appeal around a group of judges. <laughs> well, I am trying to set up an adoption day. It would mean that all judges and lawyers and court service workers donate their time one Saturday every three months. As you know, Adoptions get held up because of our overloaded docket, so I'm thinking we give up on Saturday, we make a couple hundred kids a whole lot happier. And, you know, naturally I'm, I'm donating my time, so... Does anyone else agree to do this? Absolutely. Uh, Judge... Judge Wiley? Judge Gemmel? Judge Cron... Cron Cronerling? I'm afraid this won't fly for me. I have a lot of obligations on the weekends. Yeah, all 18 holes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I'm sure Judge Faraday will understand. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. <clears throat> Hold it. Amy, Faraday's in on this? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I mentioned that. You said it was your idea. And he supports me on it. I guess I could spare one Saturday every three or four months. Here, Andy, another patty melt. You were eating that precise sandwich the first time I met you. Not this precise sandwich, I hope. <laughs> Did you get my postcards? Oh, yes. From Munich. 
look very cold there. Did you get my messages? I hope they weren't cold. Your postcards were very sweet. A welcome diversion. Things have been uh, bumpy. Socrates died. Yes, I know. Hemlock. Socrates is our ambassador. Oh. I guess I've been a little low. All of my colors are a little washed out. Is that why you don't return my calls? I don't understand. If you just... Went looking for someone with brighter colors? Hmm. So was everything like that? Washed out? Oh, no, no, not everything. Uh, there is a, a project that I've started. No, let me guess. Saving children from a fate worse than death. Making the world a better place. Something along those lines. It's embarrassing when you say it like that. Hmm. So this project, what's it called? The Sanctuary House. I'm trying to figure out how to get the board of directors at the hospital to give me an old abandoned house where, with the help of a very energetic woman that I'm working with, we hope to set up a vertically integrated child advocacy center. I'm sorry, is this interesting? Very. Please, come out. Ariadne's hungry. Breast milk in the fridge. Donna, I've been taking care of Ariadne all day. It's fine, but I now I have a date with Carol and I don't want to go on it. <laughs> Just uh, leave the baby in the playpen. She'll come out eventually. I'm sorry, Vincent. I, I can't face Ariadne right now. Hi, Carol. Why can't you face her? She's a demon seed. <laughs> she, she's not a demon seed. Look at her. Open the door and look at her. Why don't I just go get the tickets? But this is not my fault. I didn't say it was. Donna just found out that her baby's father is a murderer. It never occurred to her that a convicted killer might have actually, say, killed someone? Donna's one of those people who... She had faith, and now this has just turned her world upside down. I, maybe it's a postpartum thing. I don't know, but I can't... I can't just leave. Okay. I'll meet you later for a drink. Donna, I'm begging you. I can't. I, I just can't. Take your cell phone. I'll call. Okay. Good luck. Bye, Donna. Bye, Carol. Demonic possessions occur in four stages. Infestation during which time the demon circles the victim and there are unexplainable external phenomena. Such as all the windows in the Demiola household cracking at the same moment. The next stage is obsession. The victim suffers a major personality change. Then there is contact in which the demon takes residence and there is a struggle for control. Finally, there is full-blown possession in which the victim's will is totally subjugated to the demons. Haley appears to be at stage three. Uh, Mr. Kara, I'd like you to please move on to testimony which has relevance to this case. Your Honor, if I can't prove to you that Haley Demiola is in fact possessed, then how can I convince you that she requires an exorcism? You can start by having your witness tell me exactly what will happen to Haley Demiola during an exorcism. Objection, Your Honor. Do you object to my question, Miss Sellers? Professor McWhorter will not be conducting the exorcism, ergo his testimony is speculative. You want me to produce an actual exorcist? That's a very good idea. Exorcists are forbidden to testify without the permission of the bishop. Well, not if I summons him. An exorcist is not likely to cooperate even if you subpoena him. Then the exorcist will come to realize that hell is nothing compared to the persistence of an annoyed superior court judge. His name, please. This is a Jesuit priest. He answers to a higher authority than you. Fine. In the absence of any other testimony, I'll make my ruling right now. Father Paul Girardi. 
S.J. Is she the subpoena, Mr. Van Exel? all sweaty and fit and ready to kick somebody <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, I extended my run this morning. W why? So I could bump into you. Well, bump away. <laughs> um, I was wondering, since you're looking for a babysitter, maybe I could recommend someone for the job? Oh, you, kn you know somebody? Yeah, she's, uh, she's very bright, intelligent. Uh, she's great with kids. She's beautiful. She's fun. Wow. Sounds a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so where should she go? Who? My niece, Katie, to apply for the job. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's your niece. Oh. Do, you, do you have a pen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a weird pen, but <laughs> um, she should. Um, she should. Uh, she. Should, <laughs> she should probably. Uh, she can come to the courthouse. Um, on, on Washington Street? She's, uh, she's 19. She's a college freshman. And I, I guarantee you love her. I already do. Ah, Barb. I'm writing up a proposal for the hospital board right now. I got some wonderful advice from a very knowledgeable friend. The hard part seems to be coming up with some financial sponsorship from a private source. There are several foundations which I think... I think I'm babbling and you're not. What's wrong? You got an offer for matching funds. I don't understand. Whatever the monetary value of grants or disbursements from the hospital or from the state, an anonymous private donor has agreed to match with cash. Do you know what this means? Yes, I sure as hell do. You've done it! Now, where are we going? We, we've got to go someplace and celebrate. I have a meeting. Excuse me. Well, congratulations, Maxine. Yes, this is my lucky day. Uh, just for future reference, what do you like when things go badly? I have a 3.9 GPA. I'm an avid swimmer and Connecticut Mathlete of the Year. It's like athlete, only with math. I have a black belt in karate. I am an excellent cook, and I get the safe driver's discount on my car insurance. Judge Gray. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have to cut this short, Katie, but, um, but I'll let you know when we can resume. I'm available immediately. <clears throat> well, you are obviously well qualified. I, I, I'm just, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to hire anyone at all. I've always taken care of Lauren myself with, with the help of my family, and uh, I guess I'm not ready to admit defeat. You do remember we have an extended session tonight. Oh, crap and corruption. Oh, no problem. I can pick Lauren up. Sort of like a tryout? Demonic possession and exorcism are gravely misunderstood, Judge Gray. Certainly not accepted by society as a whole. The ritual itself is closely guarded by the church but I will answer what questions I can within the guidelines established by the Archdiocese. Uh, how many exorcisms have you performed, Father? I'd rather not answer that. Um, Father, these people have put the welfare of their daughter in my hands, so I have to figure out whether Mr. DeMille is contention that an exorcism will actually harm his, his mentally ill daughter is, is true or not. I have a degree in abnormal psychology and internal medicine. In the massive majority of the cases brought to me, I find that the unfortunate suffers from nothing more than mental or emotional illness. And how is Haley Demiola different? Well, after a six-month investigation, it became obvious to us that she is possessed. Uh, what, what effect would the ritual of an exorcism have on Haley? It would drive out the demon. <laughs> um... 
What is the process? I, I can tell you that I lay hands on her gently. I uh, make motions over her and I pray in Latin. I exhort the demon to leave her in the name of God. No. Once the demon identifies itself, the victim is then baptized. Father Girardi, the holy water burns, does it not? It, it burns the demon, not the victim. Wait, we're talking about regular water? H2O at, at room temperature? Well, holy water has been blessed by priests. But it's still just water. I don't know how to answer that. Ah, uh, okay. I think I've heard enough. I know how this sounds to you, but until you confront evil face confront to face... evil every day, Father, in the form of abuse and neglect of children. I don't know anything gets more evil than that. With all due respect, Judge Gray, you're wrong. We all want to believe in the rational world. The rational world and the love of God. But there is also evil. Most of it comes, as, as you say, from, from our own weaknesses, from our own distance, from grace. That's the evil you fight every day, and I commend you for it. But I have seen an evil that comes from outside. That mows us down like grain before a scythe. I have seen it. And I see it in Haley. One day, her mother and I were sitting with Haley, and the demon inside her made horrifically obscene propositions to me in Latin. We prayed for strength, and for one moment, she looked at me. Haley, you understand? Not, not the demon. And she said, please help me in her own voice. It was the terrified cry of a child. Please, don't stop me from going to her aid. Origami. She did? What does that smell? We make cookies. You, you did? Mm hmm. Did, did you do your homework? Homework, homework first. first. That's, That's the worst. worst. Then, then have, have fun, fun when the homework's, homework's done. done. Oh. I love Katie. Can she take care of me every day, Mommy? Well, yeah, she's, uh, she's gonna pick you up from school, but, uh, but I'm home now, so we can do stuff. Like what? Um, Crazy Eights. I'd rather do origami with Katie. <laughs> what should I make next? Let's see, we can make another tiger. Okay. We can do that. Okay, we can get this one out. Okay. <laughs> There's my little peanut. Come to mommy. Come to mommy. Look at that smile. Aren't you a genius? I'm telling you, Donna, she is exceptionally alert. <laughs> Raven. Uh, Ari, I need an hour covering a strike meeting downtown. <laughs> so everything's back to normal? If it ever was? Oh, Carol explained it to me. Oh. Remember that show we did on the relationship between environment and genetic predisposition? Oh, yes, I do. On the radio. That was, oh, that was, uh, that was a very good show. Well, I brought Donna the transcripts and a few other materials. Did you know that environment is much more important to a developing personality than genetics? God, I hope that's true. Well, you gotta give Ariadne a bath. <laughs> oh. And... So did we do a show like that? It was before your time. I uh, wanted to include you. You just showing axe murderers and their demon seed offspring. <laughs> Donna's very intelligent. All she needed was a few nurture versus nature facts. 
I also got her to take a B12 supplement. She was depleted. Fighting ignorance with knowledge, that's quite a radical concept. It was selfish, really. I wanted you back. And the woman obviously need a little reassurance. I'm good at that. Well, I for one am feeling very reassured. What's that smell? Fresh baked, low fat, delicious cookies. You found a babysitter who bakes? Yep. She's obnoxious and bright and idiotic and does origami and sings annoying little songs about homework and is smug. And I hate her. Ma, I hate her. But Lauren thinks the sun shines right out of her butt. Don't be crude, dear. This would be Karate Rob's niece? Yeah, but that's, that's not why I'm hiring her. No, you're taking on a babysitter you hate because that's what's best for Lauren. Well, I don't want to be hiring a babysitter at all, but I, I've, I've been on this really difficult case and I'm trying to get this adoption day scheme off the ground and it just seems like everything is conspiring to keep me from getting home to my daughter. And when I finally do get home, she barely looks at me. I mean, you tell me, what's the use of, of going out there and, and fighting to make the world a better place if you lose your daughter? I had a swell day, too, dear. But did you have Satan? Oh, now, Amy, I know you don't like the girl, but she's hardly Satan. No, Ma, I, I, I'm serious. In, in court today, I, I actually had s Satan. Uh, okay, not Satan, but Satan's parents. Why in God's name did you turn down my money? Uh, Jared, do you want to come in? No, I'm angry. I yell better outdoors. That money is your way of ensuring that I have to see you. Or maybe it's pity, but either way, I'm not comfortable. Oh, God forbid you might have to squirm. You know, maybe you're just afraid to be loved and respected. Yes, that's it exactly. Is that all? Sorry about your dog. Sorry about your muted colors. But I'm just... Maxine, just a minute. Yeah. Maxine, I have feelings for you. I wish I didn't. You're a difficult woman. But I do. I just can't figure out what possesses you sometimes. I mean, what is so wrong with me that we can't at least try to be together? What I have to say can only cause pain and dissension. Oh. And destroy all this harmony? Maxine, pain and dissension would be a step up. Your son Charles accused me of seeing you for your money. And he offered me money to leave you alone. I turned him down, of course, but I would never come between you and your son. See? I knew you would react like this. I'm gonna kick that boy's ass up around his ears. Some sort of stupid Oedipal thing regarding his mother, I suppose. Yeah, quite frankly, Maxine, if this is the reason you've been avoiding me, I'd like to kick your ass, too. Maybe you could trust the fella just once in a while to do the right thing. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That's exactly how I sound to Karate Rob. I just took out the garbage. I mean, here. Good morning, everyone. Well, isn't taking Lauren to school part of the gig? I thought we could practice the times tables along the way. Seven times six is 42. Um, you know what, Katie? I, I, I'm, I'm rethinking this whole idea. What on earth is this? Oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, especially for the very young and the very old. I'm going to let that pass, because uh, breakfast always tastes so much better when someone else makes it. 
here's the thing, Katie. When we lived in Manhattan, Lauren spent more time with her nannies and her babysitters than she did with her father and me. So, you know, I figured that when we moved back to Connecticut, I'd try to be a better mom. And... Did you wash my karate gi? You have karate again? Yeah. Rob says I'm very talented. <laughs> yes, and we know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't say I told you, but my Uncle Rob, he has sort of a thing for you. For me? Come on. He says you're a hottie. <laughs> Amy, for heaven's sake, close your mouth. You look simple. It doesn't matter whether I believe in God or the devil, Santa Claus, the Sasquatch, or a little green man when it comes to this case. I know this has been very frustrating for uh, Mrs. Demiola and her counsel, but... I simply cannot adjudicate on whether or not Haley Demiola is possessed by a demon. Now, fortunately for me, this case does not come down to fundamental beliefs. It comes down to the best interests of a child. Mrs. Demiola and Father Girardi believe that Haley is possessed. And Mr. Demiola and Dr. Kemper believe she's the victim of Asperger's syndrome and schizophrenia. As to whether an exorcism would help or harm Haley, I might as well flip a coin. The best interests of the child. Well, at the end of the day, I'm required to say that uh, I did everything possible. Haley called out for help. She called out to her mother and to Father Girardi. And through them, perhaps, uh, to me. I can only hope that somewhere in her diseased mind or from behind a demon, Haley knows what she needs. I'm hereby denying Mr. Alphonse Demiola's motion to block his daughter's exorcism. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, then. Okay. It can take two years for these good-hearted people to navigate the system to adopt a child. The redundancies, the bureaucratic runaround, red tape. Oh, there's nothing I can do about any of that. So I ask myself, what can I do? How can I make things better? Oh, you have to say something. To their credit, the workers and lawyers and judges in the courthouse, after I showed them the way, volunteered in droves. Honest to God, Jared. Are you having me followed? It's Tuesday night during a very rough week. Where else would you go to get a little peace and quiet? I pay attention, Maxine. We got the house. Congratulations. Jared, you have given me enough money. Oh, no. no. This is a letter of apology for my son, Charles. Oh. Well, that wasn't necessary. Uh -uh. He didn't write it to you. He wrote it to me. If he's any kind of a man, he'll apologize to you in person. You're angry with me. About half the time. I can live with that. I'm afraid I can't. Because I can do better. If I can't get that down to a quarter of the time in the next six months, then I really won't deserve a sweet man like you. A 
mother's heart can shatter I told her daughter to beware Both secrets and dreams you should never share Trust only in change Cause hearts change But the trail always feels the same But with him she found loyalty Come be with me Soothe my broken heart Show me loyalty You're here, right? <laughs> Sorry. Guess that exorcism stuff got to you, huh? No. Well, you're Catholic. Do you think that girl is possessed? I have no idea. <laughs> I like the idea of Satan. You like the idea of Satan? Well, that we're not always responsible for all the bad stuff we do. Sometimes we can blame our problems on somebody else. You do understand that believing in Satan means believing in the possibility of everlasting damnation in a fiery lake. <laughs> do you have a little girl to get home to? No, oh, please. That's all I try to do is get home to my daughter. It's like the whole world is conspiring to keep me away from her. Or maybe the devil. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know how this goes. You're here fighting for other people's children while someone else is raising yours. I'm a single father. <laughs> Come on. great stuff <laughs> you know maybe I am maybe Lauren is fine maybe her life won't be ruined because I'm so invested in my work but it's a Tuesday night and I'm stuck in an elevator and you know the really sad thing is nobody's even gonna notice I'm missing until tomorrow morning Jump with me. One, two, three. I just think it's the time of year. It's the short days. Everything goes so fast, you know? Yeah. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, can McCoy handle a complicated trial? Solve the case with law and order. Next on TNT.